What's going on guys? Pistol Pack and Pilot back here with another video. May 12th, 2021, Key Lime Air Flight 970 was involved in a mid-air collision with a Cirrus SR-22 a couple of miles north of Denver's Centennial Air Park. Key Lime Air 970 was in tell number 280 Kilo Lima. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Back in the day, I flew this plane. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, Pistol Pack and Pilot, little bit of a brief synopsis of what happened in one of the most unique mid-air collisions I have ever heard about in my entire life. And the reason it's so unique is because usually mid-air collision result in multiple, multiple fatalities. And in this particular instance, ladies and gentlemen, nobody and I do mean nobody was killed or even injured for that matter. Just to set the scene a little bit, Key Lime 970 was on a long final for runway 17 left in Denver Centennial Air Park. There was a Cirrus SR-22 that did end up colliding with Key Lime 970, which was a Swear Engine Fairchild Metroliner, otherwise known as an SA-226. It was a Metro 3. I have quite a few hours in Metro 2s, Metro 3s, and Metro 23s. I've had several other aviation jobs leading up to the job I currently have, which is the job I obviously plan to retire from. What we're going to do is this comes to us courtesy of Victor from Vass Aviation, and it is an audio transcript of the conversation with air traffic control, which is, in a word, amazing. And this story just gets more and more amazing as we get deeper and deeper into it. It also has the radar overlay, so you will get to see this developing as it plays out. So without further ado, let's start the tape. Cirrus 6 Delta Julia, traffic at your 1 to 2 o'clock a mile, about to turn base as they sky off. So Cirrus 416 Delta Juliet is the accident aircraft, and this right here is the Cirrus. The controller is calling out traffic to the Cirrus uh, Skyhawk, a Cessna 172, right here, who appears to be on final for runway 17 right, which is right here. So 17 right, as you look at this screen, it should actually be on your left side, and 17 left is actually on your right side. So we'll continue the record. Sir, 6 Delta Juliet, fly the word to be West Shore of Cherry Creek. West Shore of Cherry Creek for 6 Delta Juliet. So basically, he's telling them to fly towards the west shore of the Cherry Creek Reservoir, which is basically somewhere in this area. It is above this Cessna 172 Skyhawk, and it is below this aircraft right here, which we'll get to in a, in a minute. Tower, good morning, Cat 970 on the visual on the left. Cat 970 Centennial Tower, if you can, just maintain that speed. There'll be traffic in position prior to your arrival. Uh -huh. Okay, so right now what happened is the controller is telling Key Lime 970, which hasn't quite come into your screen yet here at the very top, to maintain a speed because she's planning on departing an aircraft prior to his arrival. Okay, Thank you. Sir, 6 Delta Julia, traffic is following, just turned right base. They're ahead to the right, 6,600 Cessna. Uh, traffic is right, 6 Delta Juliet. Okay, so now the controller has advised the accident aircraft, 416 Delta Juliet, about this aircraft right here. Sierra 6 Delta Juliet, follow them, runway 17 right, cleared to land. Additional traffic, North Shore is the metro line for the parallel. Uh, traffic in sight, cleared to land once. 
Okay, this is very important. So he cleared Cirrus 416 Delta Julia to land. He advised him of the traffic right here, who he's supposed to sequence behind. And he also advised him of traffic land on the parallel runway, which is the Metro Liner, which is the second accident aircraft. He said, traffic in sight, clear to land, 17 right, 6 Delta Julia. So he acknowledged the traffic. Now the question is, is he acknowledging this guy, the Metro Liner, or both of them? And we have to assume he's acknowledging both of them because both targets were called out to him. And the Metro Liner up here should not even be that big of a factor because he's landing on the parallel. So he should never cross the final, the extended runway center line for the Metro Liner. All right, let's go for Juliet. Tier 970 traffic, one o'clock, one mile, 6,500. That's non final for the parallel runway. Roger, Cam 970, we're looking. Okay, now the controller just called out traffic to the Metro Liner, who's just coming into your screen right here. She's calling out the traffic to him. She's advising him of the traffic. He has not called them in sight. He said, we're looking. Until you call traffic in sight, it's assumed that you do not see them. Once you call traffic in sight, like the Cirrus did, you're taking responsibility for your own separation. And I might add the weather on this day in Denver was unlimited visibility, clear skies, and calm winds. Q-Line 970, runway 17 left, clear to land, wind foam. Clear to land, 17 left, Q-Line 970. Okay, so now this is the Cessna, who the Cirrus is sequencing behind, and he's landing on this runway right here. This is Key Lime 970, who's landing on this runway right here, on that side. So these two airplanes should never intersect. And the separation between these two, which are landing on the same runway, is adequate. And there's some radio silence right now, but here you can see these two targets merging dangerously close to each other. It appears this Cirrus has not turned towards the airport and he is drifting that direction towards Key Lime 970, which is that green Fairchild Metro Liner. All right, now at this point, the collision has already occurred. We'll continue. Uh, Cirrus, 6 Delta Juliet, do you overshoot the final? Cirrus, 6 Delta Juliet, do you require assistance? Okay, so now the controller still has no idea that there's been a mid-air collision. He's asking the Cirrus if they require any assistance because all he notices is that he overshot final. So the controller is probably thinking, this guy lost sight of the airport. At this point, I don't think the controller realizes there's been a collision, but he's about to realize things went very, very wrong in about one second here as shit hits the fan. Tower, Kilo 970, declare an emergency. We have, um, looks like the right engine failed, so I'm gonna continue my landing here. Okay, now here's where, here's where it gets really interesting, guys. The pilot in command of Key Lime 970, right here, which is that Fairchild Metro Liner, he knows something's wrong. He's suspecting a right engine failure. He has no idea that his plane has just been ripped into shreds by another aircraft. When you're up there, things tend to happen very quickly sometimes, and the engines from somebody that actually has a little bit of time in these uh, Fairchild Metro liners, they have these Garrett engines on them, guys, that are extremely loud and extremely noisy, even with wearing headsets. And it's very, very hard to hear much of anything. Of course, you're sitting in the front of the plane in the flight deck, so you're not necessarily seeing 
what your cabin looks like because you're looking forward flying the airplane. So he knows something's wrong. He feels the aircraft is probably not handling appropriately and he's suspecting a right engine failure. So he did the right thing. He declared an emergency. He's going to continue straight ahead and he's gonna land his airplane. T-Line 970, we have crews come in, uh, continue inbound, runway 17 left, clear two in. Yes. Sir, 6 Delta if you hear this transmission, we have emergency vehicles, zero direction. Right now, they're starting to figure out that this Cirrus, which is back here, is in some major trouble. And so, uh, there's another one, it's probably a Cirrus that dropped the parachute, uh, fine over 1117. Thank you. So this Cirrus actually has a ballistic parachute system in it. It's actually a rocket that fires a parachute straight up in the air in the event of something catastrophic like this. And it will safely parachute the aircraft down to the ground. Now, the control tower is about to talk to another Cessna as the situation unfolds. Final, there is a, an aircraft that is in distress just south of Cherry Creek Reservoir. Yeah, they just pulled two, two, five, one. <laughs> okay. So Cessna 251 is another aircraft in the traffic pattern. Here's where the story gets even more interesting. The pilot of Cessna 251 is a student pilot on his first solo flight. So his first time in his entire life flying an airplane by himself and he finds himself up in a traffic pattern where there's just been a mid-air collision and now he's being summoned to assist the tower in locating this Cirrus that apparently has just pulled his parachute. Five one, if you can give me an accurate location, we would appreciate it. They're about two miles by those buildings right off uh, three five. The yeah, parachutes. Yeah, the uh, parachute is just south of the reservoir. It's uh, in the, uh, in the airport uh, vicinity, just south of the reservoir, correct? About a mile from the reservoir. A pop uh, there's a hawk right between the parallels. Central aircraft use caution for a hawk reported between the parallels. As if they needed any more bullshit to happen, now we've got birds that are causing havoc. Sorry, that was a definite mid-air on short final. This forward spot. First confirmation we have by another aircraft that it was definitely a mid-air collision. Do you need me assistance? I'm going to tack you off here, and I think I'll just park over and stick the drop good, though. Okay, now here's where it gets funny. The pilot of Key Lime 970 at this point doesn't know he's had a mid-air collision. He still has no idea. He thinks he's had an engine failure, and he's just going to taxi back to parking at Signature Flight Support with one engine. Not a big deal under normal circumstances, right? He has no idea that half of his plane has just been ripped off. Okay, I'm 970, Roger, I appreciate that. Uh, and if you just stand by. Okay, the controller's voice here is epic because she's probably confused that he wants to taxi to parking with his plane ripped to shreds. Problem is, I truly believe the pilot of Key Lime 970 has absolutely no idea what's happened. He is still suspecting engine failure. Meanwhile, the tower controller probably has her binoculars and looking at half an airplane that just landed on the runway. Tower, I'm gonna taxi on Alpha here back to this uh, northwest corner of the signature ramp. Key Lime 970, Roger approved as requested and we'll get a crew out to you also. Roger. I, I truly believe that the pilot of Key Lime 970 doesn't even know the extent of the damage, probably until he shuts the airplane down, gets out of the flight deck, and actually sees it. Obviously, the picture of Key Lime 970 and the Cirrus that safely parachuted to a safe, off-airport, and very survivable crash landing south of the Cherry Creek Reservoir. Mid-air collisions like this, ladies and gentlemen, are truly like unheard of. I am going to put some more pictures of the crash at the end of this video. So please stick around till the end to see all of the pictures because I actually do have a picture of this aircraft in flight 
on short final, which is which is quite the sight to see. Um, as far as as who's at fault here, obviously we're going to have to wait at least a year for the NTSB to make their final determination. But based off of the information that we have at hand and that we have available right now, it sounds like the Cirrus definitely screwed this up big time. Key Lime 970 was on an extended final for 1.7 left. And it appears based off of the radar tracks that the Cirrus overshot final for runway 17 right. Sometimes when you have some wind that would be blowing, if you don't start your turn early enough, it will blow you into the extended final for another runway. But at least we know, based off of the controller's dialogue, that the winds were calm. There was no wind, at least at the surface. At maybe a thousand, feet, a thousand feet above the ground, there may have been some wind. But as a pilot, it's your job to know what the winds are doing and to compensate for the winds and either start your turn at a normal time or compensate for these winds and start your turn a little earlier or a little later so that you roll out on final without causing separation issues with other aircraft. Either that would have been the case or the pilot of that Cirrus for some reason thought runway 17 left was runway 17 right. Like I said, we're obviously gonna have to wait for the NTSB to make their final ruling but it appears that the Cirrus definitely made a few mistakes here. Being able to take an airplane like this, and when I flew this airplane, I knew it was built like a tank, no doubt about it. The pilot of Key Lime 970 literally had half, half of his airplane ripped in half, and it still got him back to the airport safely. So job well done by Key Lime 970. I appreciate all of you watching this. I am the pistol packing pilot. And I am out.